We all know, we all know that the present health care system and insurance system, uh, health insurance system in our country is unsustainable. We simply cannot afford it. It doesn't work for enough people in terms of delivery of service, and it is bankrupting the country with the upward spiral of increasing medical cost. The best action that we can take on behalf of America's family budgets and on behalf of the federal budget is to pass health care reform. The, the best action we can take to strengthen Medicare and improve care and benefits for our seniors is to pass this legislation tonight, pass health care reform. The best action we can do to create jobs and strengthen our economic security is pass health care reform. The best action we can take to keep America competitive, ignite innovation, again, unleash entrepreneurial spirit, is to pass health care reform. Thank you. With this action tonight, with this health care reform, 32 million more Americans will have health care insurance. And those who have insurance now will be spared of being at the mercy of the health insurance industry with their obscene increases in premiums, their rescinding of policies at the time of illness, their cutting off of policies even if you have, have been uh, pe fully paying but become sick. The list goes on and on about the health care reforms that are in this legislation. Ensure 32 million more people, make it more affordable for the middle class, end insurance company discrimination on pre-existing conditions, improve care and benefits under Medicare, and extending Medicare solvency for almost a decade. Creating a healthier America through prevention, through wellness and innovation, create four million jobs in the life of the bill, and on doing all of that by saving the taxpayer $1.3 trillion. Another, another speaker, Tip O'Neill, once said, all politics is local. And I say to you tonight that when it comes to health care, for all Americans, all politics is personal. It's personal for the family that wrote to me who had to choose between buying groceries and seeing a doctor. It's personal to the family who re was refused coverage because their child had a pre-existing condition. No coverage, the child got worse, sicker. It's personal for women. After we pass this bill, being a woman will no longer be a pre-existing medical condition. <laughs> it's personal for a senior gentleman whom I met in Michigan who told me about his wife who had been bedridden for 16 years. He told me he didn't know how he was going to be able to pay his medical bills. As I said to you before, I saw a grown man cry. He was worried that he might lose his home, that they might lose their home because of his medical bills, and he didn't know how he was going to pay them. And most of all, he was too embarrassed to tell his children and ask them for help. How many times have you heard a story like that? And it's personal for millions of families who have gone into bankruptcy under the weight of rising health care costs. In fact, many, 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 a high percentage of the bankruptcies in our country are caused by medical bills that people cannot pay. And it's personal for 45,000 Americans and, their, and families who have lost a loved one each year because they didn't and couldn't get health insurance. That is why we are proud and also humbled today to act with the support of millions of Americans who recognize the urgency of passing health care reform. 
and more than 350 organizations representing Americans of every age, every background, every part of the country who have endorsed this legislation. Our coalition ranges from AARP, who, quote, support, said that our legislation, quote, improves efforts to crack down on fraud and waste in Medicare, strengthening Medicare for today, today seniors, and future generations. I repeat, improves efforts to crack down on fraud and waste in Medicare, strengthening the program for today's and future generations of seniors. To the American Medical Association, the Catholic Health Association, the United, Medical, the United Methodist Church, and Voices of America's Children. From A to Z, they are sending a clear message to members of Congress, say yes to health care reform. We have also reached this historic uh, moment because of the extraordinary leadership and hard work of, and dedication of all of the members of Congress. But I want to especially recognize our esteemed chairs, Mr. Waxman, Mr. Rangel, Mr. Levin, Mr. Miller, Mr. Spratt, Ms. Slaughter for bringing this bill to the floor today. Let us acknowledge them. I, and I want to acknowledge the staff of the committees and of the leadership. They have done a remarkable dazzling us with their knowledge and their know-how. I would like to thank on my own staff, Amy Rosenbaum, Wendell Primus, and Arshi Siddiqui. And now I want to just close by saying this. It wouldn't be possible to talk about health care without now acknowledging the great leadership of said Senator Edward Kennedy, who made health care his life's work. In a letter to President Obama before he passed away, he left the letter to be read after he died, Senator Kennedy wrote that access to health care was the great unfinished business of our society. That is until today. <laughs> after more of a year of debate, and by the way, the legislation that will go forth from here has over 200 Republican amendments. And while it may not get Republican votes and be bipartisan in that respect, it is bipartisan in having over 200 Republican amendments. <laughs> then, after a year of debate and hearing the calls of millions of Americans, we have come to this historic moment. Today, we have the opportunity to complete the great unfinished business of our society and pass health insurance reform for all Americans. That is a right and not a privilege. In that same letter to the President, Senator Kennedy wrote, what is at stake, he said, at stake are not just the details of policy, but the character of our country. Americans will look back on this day and one in which we honored the character of our country and honored our commitment to our nation's founders for a commitment to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. As our colleague John Lewis has said, we may not have chosen the time, but the time has chosen us. We have been given this opportunity. I urge our, uh, an opportunity to stay right up there with, again, Social Security, Medicare, health care for all Americans. I urge my colleagues and join together in passing health insurance reform, making history, making progress, and restoring the American dream. I urge and I vote. Thank you all very much.